up, weirdos? I'm Chris Weir, and this is The Chris Weir Experience. And today we're on episode 11 of The Daily Weirdo. And today I want to talk about guarding your organizational philosophy. Now, first, what is an organizational philosophy and, and, and why is that even a relevant or important thing for you to have? Let me give you an example. For Two Second Media, which is my advertising agency that I own, we have an organizational philosophy that states we will advertise for today, not for 10 years ago, not for 10 years from now, but we're going to advertise for today. In advertising and marketing, it's all about attention. I've said that for many years, and it'll probably always be the case uh, with marketing and advertising. It's, it's all about attention. So we need to focus on where the attention is today, not where it used to be, not where it's going to be in 10 years from now, but where it is today. So our organize, part of our organizational philosophy is advertising for today. Now, there are many elements to the philosophy, but it, it touches on those type things. What are... what? How do we envision what it is that we do? Let's define basically our our mission, our purpose statement, our, our vision statement for the company. Creating that organizational philosophy is so incredibly important because it grounds you as the entrepreneur or the leader or the manager or wherever you're at. It grounds you and gives you the safety net with your employees. This is another area where I made a mistake um, on my first agency is we never clearly defined what our organizational philosophy was. I felt like part of that, and we kind of went into the employment 2.0 mode where, oh, let your employees help shape the philosophy of your company. Let them step in and help you determine all of these different things, which sounds great on paper, employee empowerment, this and that. Um, uh, Flawed in practice, though. It's not very practical, and it doesn't work very well. I mean, a prime example, right? I absolutely will listen to my teenager, and I will certainly take in her thoughts and her concerns, but she sure as heck is not going to write my book on how to parent um, her. That's silly. I'm not going to have her tell me how to parent her because she's only going to be looking for her very specific interests, right? And that's the same thing with employees is they're going to be looking for their specific interests. They don't have a 30,000 foot view of the business because they don't need to, and they shouldn't. It's not their business. They're not being paid for that. They're not being compensated like you are. So they're never going to have that kind of view. So it's important that you set what your vision for the company is and what the organizational philosophy is. And then that's the benchmark. Your employees are then required to buy into that philosophy. They're, they're responsible for supporting and protecting that organizational philosophy. Within that, obviously, there's the suggestion box, right? The proverbial suggestion box. Take suggestions. Absolutely listen to your employees. But everything gets graded against the philosophy and making sure that everything fits within that philosophy. It's your guardrails. One of the things that I did that I, I highly regret is I started, again, listening to my employees so much about where they thought the company should be going, and I would change fundamentals of the company, of the ad agency before, and I would change kind of directions that we were going based on the feedback that I was getting from, from the employees. And what ended up happening was I started losing, I'm not going to say I started losing control, That I don't think that's the right word. I believe it was more that it just started going in a different direction than, than what I personally wanted and what I was passionate about. So therefore, you start getting burned out a little bit. You know, I've told the story before, if you follow my content at all, you already know the whole situation with my first agency and where I finally came to the point um, after so many years of running the agency that I, I, the frustrations and the annoyances of owning the business had just reached its peak. Um, and I needed to take a step back and I needed to take a break. And, and I did that. Um, I'm now back into the agency after that break. I've opened a new agency and I was able to stop and, and, and take a look and kind of evaluate myself, look in the mirror a little bit, look at what I did, how can I do things better? And I think one of the biggest areas that I can improve on in my, my business today is this idea of guarding my organizational philosophy. At the end of the day, 
you are the last line. As the entrepreneur, the buck stops with you. You are the last say in everything, and you have to be that. And that's part of being an entrepreneur. And if you don't like that piece of it, you're not comfortable being the the last line of defense, don't open your own business. Go be a manager for somebody. Because I'm telling you, as an entrepreneur, if you don't hold the philosophy of the company, all the employees and all the activities of the business, if you don't hold that close to your vision and your mission, it will burn you out. You're going to start getting frustrated because things aren't going how you want them to go and you need them to go. Look, you're you're the one taking the risk here. So it has to go your direction. That is not to say that you can't take advice. That's not to say that you can't take suggestions. But those suggestions have to be pitted against something or you're going to go off in 30 different directions. You've that that philosophy again is kind of the guardrails. It's the it's the the bumper. You know, in bowling, right when you go bowling, um, and the, and it's time for the kids to come up, and the, the little bumpers come up on the side so it won't go um, into the gutter. That's kind of what your organizational philosophy is. It's those bumpers to make sure that you don't go off and you end up um, getting into the gutter. You get off track on where your business should be going. You have the vision. This is your business. This is your baby. It's not anybody else's baby. That's not to say employees aren't valuable, but look, they don't have the risk that you have. They don't have the the long nights and the stress and all the, the things that come along with being an entrepreneur. None of them have to deal with any of that, and they shouldn't. That's not their job. They're not being compensated for that. That's the same thing with creating a vision and, and determining a direction for the company. They're not getting paid to do that. They don't care about your company. They don't care about your vision as much as you do. In fact, nobody on the face of this planet cares about your company as much as you do. So guard that philosophy, guard that structure, that that process, that vision, that mission, the purpose of your business. Guard that with everything that you have. Take the suggestions, but pit them against that. And I promise you, your business will continue moving in the direction that you want it to move. That's not to say it guarantees you success, right? Because you may have a crappy vision, right? You may be, <laughs> you may be a bad business owner who just is running a bad business and it's not going to work. And, and that's one thing. But as long as you have a good business, you're running a good business, you have a good vision and it's solid, stick to your philosophy. I promise you it pays off in dividends in the end. I sure hope this helps somebody. Uh, Would love your comments. Talk to you soon.